uh, switching gears a little bit, you yeah. have a, a piece, The Mysterious Case of Deported Dreamer, mm -hmm. Juan Manuel Montez. Uh, for all the piling on I just did of Barack Obama, he did seem to do pretty well with the Dreamer stuff, right? Like, we weren't deporting kids uh, who were born here or brought here, uh, but now we're heading in that direction. This is the first Dreamer we've seen deported, right? Right. There have, Under been, Trump, anyway. there have been a couple of cases where uh, people who have, you know, d deferred action for childhood arrivals, which is the actual, you know, grant that was given under the Obama administration to people who kind of met these qualifications. There are people who meet the qualifications who haven't necessarily, you know, applied for protection. So mm. that's kind of a different category. But it's there have been a couple of cases of people who have protection um, getting arrested and detained. And they've kind of been able to, you know, they've fought their cases uh, none of them have got, has gotten deported yet. And then this case came to light this week of something that happened last month where a dreamer who lives in, you know, way Southern California, right by the border. Um, what he alleges that he was just picked up by ICE when he was waiting for a ride or by, by Customs and Border Protection. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. that they then, you know, deported him within a few hours after making him sign some papers he then tried to come back to the U.S. because he had lived here since he was nine, yeah. and they caught him climbing over the fence and deported him again. Customs and Border Protection doesn't says they have no record of the kind of picking him up by the side of the road. That They say that all they know is that he was climbing over the fence, and if that was true, if he like went to Mexico just of his own free will for some reason, then he forfeited his DACA status because that prevents you from leaving the country without permission. So I, you know, it's... It really comes down to a question of what happened on February 17th. But mm. the reason that this is so worrisome, in addition to the big question of did Customs and Border Protection really deport someone and then lie about it? Um, you know, it, that that aside, the reason that. By the way, I believe that. I, you know, I am not going I to. Don't, I, I, I'm yeah, just saying no, me personally, I totally There have been that. cases in the past of CBP getting uh, sanctioned for destroying or misplacing records and it certainly doesn't inspire confidence in them that they initially said that he that his uh protection had expired entirely uh they actually like made this big deal of you know saying telling the daily caller that the initial story in usa today was wrong and he didn't actually have daca status and then the next day they said uh we checked our records and it turns out that he did um which it doesn't it doesn't inspire confidence i but, for one am shocked that this would happen <laughs> um but it is you know it's also plausible that this this uh, this dreamer Juan Montez has a cognitive disability. It's mm, entirely mm. possible that so, that what actually happened is something that we just don't know yet. Yeah. That like there was some misunderstanding, or that you know you don't necessarily have to believe that he is like nefariously lying to believe that something happened here. But that aside, the reason that DACA needed to exist to begin with was because President Obama spent his first term saying we're not deporting students and students would stand up when he did town halls and like show him their notices to appear in immigration court and say, well, then what the heck is this? Right. And, you know, the problem was that ICE field agents didn't necessarily feel that they, you know, didn't feel that Obama's rhetoric compelled them to not deport people who were deportable. So this kind of you have to you can affirmatively apply and then you have something that should protect you if agents come to your door. So something like this where, you know, or even some of the other cases of of dreamers who have been detained where it seems like they're trying to find reasons to strip people of their of their protections are extremely worrisome to, you know, all of the 750,000 people who in theory, have this piece of paper saying you shouldn't get deported, you know, between now and X date, but in practice are not having the kind of psychological benefits that come with that protection. And, you know, there's been social science that this is that that really even above and beyond the kind of being able to work in the U.S. legally, that the feeling of security is extremely important in helping yeah. these people who, you know, otherwise would be living with a great deal of stress every day. We never talk about that. We don't talk about that. That's absolutely true. This is going to be, I mean, if you look at the history of U.S. immigration policy, we are hitting a, you know, 30 years since the last substantial immigration reform. If you can, you know, the the Reagan amnesty in 86. And that's an extremely long period of time that is more or less unprecedented. It, it's, it's the first time that we've had an a population that's unauthorized in the U.S. that has not been able to get legal. 
um, largely because, wow. or like, you know, just yeah, on, yeah, yeah, on yeah, mass no. hasn't been able to because in 1996, a law made it a lot harder. It, it used to be a lot easier if you lived here in, in the U.S. for 10 years to kind of come through a back door and get legal status. And that became a lot more difficult. So I think that we're really going to end up seeing in the years and decades to come. Um, and this is something I've written about a little, but that I and others I think are going to be writing about, you know, more as this continues to be a thing. Um, the effects of really a generation of people who have grown up in the U.S. and who are now having children themselves uh, without having the benefits of legal status and with having this kind of constant fear of deportation hanging over their heads.